Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. This is Kate, back at it with a new video. Today I want to talk about how to pay down that pesky mortgage. And um, I'm not no uh, financial guru, I'm not some type of mortgage investor or anything like that. I've just been in the business for over 30 years and I've owned several properties. So I just want to share with you ways that you can pay down your mortgage. Because most people think that, you know, uh, when the mortgage company give you 30 years, you know, you got 30 years to pay off that mortgage. And that's not true. So pay attention, boys and girls. You might just learn something. Okay. The first thing you want to do, you want to pay off debt. Debt. will always keep you working and you will always be uh, 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 paying more money than you can afford. So you want the first thing you want to do, you want to pay off debt. And what I would suggest you do is, you know, you pay off the big stuff first and then you work on the little stuff. Or if you feel comfortable paying off the little stuff first, to, to kind of give you some inspiration that you are going somewhere, that's up to you. So the first thing you want to do, you want to pay off debt. The next thing you want to do, you want to downsize. Let's say you, you got a big house, right? And the kids moved out of the house. And you got all these bedrooms, all these bathrooms, that you're not even using. It's just you and your husband, or it might just be you. And so you're saving these rooms just in case the kids come by and they want to spend the night or what have you. And so you got room. But it's costing you in electric, it's costing you in gas, it's costing you in water, it's costing you in property taxes. You know, you got all these incurring costs for empty spaces. So if it's just you, why not just get a, a smaller place? You know, and with smaller places, your bills go down because now you're not heating all these rooms you're not using. And you know, and your taxes are gonna go down because you know now it's in a different tax bracket. So you know, you're gonna get all kind of savings uh, if you downsize to a house that doesn't cost as much as the one you live in. You know, uh, we look at TV and we, uh, and I like these shows too, where the people, everybody want to be like the rich and famous. They get all these big houses, 500,000, 300,000, 400,000. You know, those are some pretty big mortgages, and especially if you look at what the interest rates are at today's rates. I think they're around like almost what? Uh, is it 7% or a little bit over? Haven't checked lately, but I know it's up there. So, you know, your, your money don't really go that far. But that's for another video. So, so you want to downsize and you want to get something smaller if you can. The next thing you want to do, and I see this a lot, People overpay for their houses. You know, uh, if the house is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with $100,000 because $100,000 is easy number to work with. You know, I know some of y'all got like $300,000 mortgages, $500,000 mortgages, but let's just stick with the simple math for today. So let's say you got a $100,000 mortgage, right? And so you really want this house, so you're going to get a guy $150,000 and, and uh, $200,000. But what happens when we start getting a down market in the housing? Now you're underwater because you paid too much for the house because you really wanted it. So, you know, uh, houses aren't going anywhere. You know, there will always be houses. I know they say, it's a shortage of houses. Well, you know, it's always going to be houses. Okay? So you don't want to pay more on your mortgage, on a house, rather. The next thing you want to do, the next thing you want to do, you want to try to avoid private mortgage insurance. 
And what is that? Well, private mortgage insurance is like if you went like FHA instead of going conventional or you get in some type of program, first home buyer, and you only put down like 3%. Well, now they're going to require you to pay uh, mortgage insurance. And you probably be saying, well, okay, mortgage insurance, I think that's a good thing. So if, if I fall on hard times, you know, I'm paying for insurance on the mortgage. No, that's not the way it works. That insurance is for the bank and the government. It ain't got nothing to do with you. You're paying insurance in case you default, the bank and the government get their money. So it ain't got nothing to do with you. And, you know, you could be spending, uh, I don't know, I think the percent, I forget what the percentage is, but, you know, look at spending about $100 extra, $150, depending on what your mortgage is, because it goes by the percentage on that. So uh, if you can put down like 10%, 20%, you avoid that mortgage insurance because, you know, now you got equity in the property. You know, you got 10, I think you got 90 or 80% equity, so you'll be fine. Uh, bigger down payment. Uh, if you could put down like 20% on a mortgage, that'd be great because now, you know, you're knocking that mortgage down. So instead of putting down 3% on $100,000, you are, you got a mortgage of $97,000. But if you put down 20%, now you got $80,000. So, you know, you coming out the gate with equity and you come and you got a lower mortgage. This one, let's say if you're a senior, and you got a mortgage. Well, what you want to do is you want to file for uh, your senior freeze if you're 65. And then you want to uh, also apply for your homeowner's uh, uh, tax exemption. So you know, those, those are very important because it's going to lower your taxes. So let's say if you got taxes of $2,000, well, you'll probably only be paying $1,000. So, you know, that's going to help. So you want to do that as a senior. You want to try to go for all the things you can get as a senior. The next one is if you got uh, what's called a bi-weekly mortgage. Now, this is great because the way it works is instead of them taking out the mortgage Every uh, month, they take it out uh, every two weeks, which means at the end of the year, you got one extra mortgage payment. So let's, let's do some math. So let's say if you did this for 10 years, that, and let's say your mortgage is $1,000, that means that you, get, you, done, you got an extra... 10K over 10 years to go towards that uh, $90,000 uh, mortgage. So if you went 20 years, that's 20,000. So over 20 years, so now that's gonna bring your mortgage down to $70,000, okay? Now, I bet some of you said, well, Kay, you know, my mortgage, again, is $300,000. So, you know, I'm only using basic numbers. So this way, uh, I don't confuse people. I, I don't know what your mortgage is. So I can't put it up on the board, obviously, right? So I'm just going with basic numbers. But, you know, you just do the math on your own. So what you would do, you would contact your mortgage company and say, hey, you know, how do I get in to buy weekly mortgage plan uh, with the mortgage company? And they're going to tell you, well, here's the downside to this. Most mortgage companies want you to pay up one full mortgage up front. And that's going to be the sticking point for most people because everybody's living paycheck to paycheck, including myself. So, you know, it's kind of hard to do that. But if you're a saver and you're able to, you know, do that one mortgage up front, well, yeah, then you just do it like that and, you know, you're going to get your savings. So, you know, the bi-weekly mortgage. The next one is what I try to do 
is pay ahead. One mortgage. The reason I do this is, now again, it's just like the bi-weekly mortgage. You got to have some money to do this. But, you know, let's say if you was able to do a little overtime or you saved up a little money, this one would really help you. And the mortgage company lets you do it. Let's say if you pay one whole mortgage up front, right, on your mortgage, right? So let's say we're in June, and you pay for July as well. So now you're one month ahead, every month. You're always one month ahead. Now, you can, you're going to still pay your mortgage just like you paid, but you one mortgage ahead. So let's say if I pay an extra mortgage in July with my mortgage, so that means that uh, August I don't have to pay a mortgage because, you know, I already paid it, right? Well, no. Uh, you still pay it, and you just going to always have that one month up there. So in case something happens, you can't work for whatever reason, you get laid off, you get fired, uh, and I've been in all those uh, categories, you got at least that one month up there, and all you do is just call the mortgage company and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to use this. I'm not going to pay a mortgage for the month of August. I'm just going to use the extra mortgage I got up there. And they're going to say, oh, no problem. But, you know, give them some notice, though. You got to do that. So uh, what did I do with my eraser? Oh, uh, here it is, right? Here. So, you know, that's going to that's gonna help you. Now, I got another way, If and I'm going to get to that later. I don't want to go ahead of myself. So you can do, you know, just pay ahead one month if you can. I've done that, and it really works. Then, you know, you can get to the point where you can start doing it with your light bill, your gas bill. I really do it with my gas bill. You know, I let that money build up. You know, you can get on the uh, budget with them, but you, at the end of the year, you don't go anywhere. But if you just pay extra uh, on your gas bill and your light bill, you'll see the difference. You'll just see credits, credits, credit. Every time your bill come out, no payment is due. Credit, credit, credit. So this time when the winter roll around, you know, you can chill and relax because you already paid ahead. The next one is pay extra on your principal on your mortgage. Now, this is a good one. Now, you can even go as far as $25 extra on your principal. And you're going to see a difference. So if you pay, let's just say if you pay $25 extra a month on your mortgage, right? That's 12, 13, 14, 15 times 2, 0, 10, 1. That's an additional $300 a year. Now, most people, if you can now, if you got a $100 that you can do that with a month towards your principal every month, that's $1,200 plus whatever your regular principal is, it adds up. So now you're knocking that mortgage down. If you can do $100, $100 would be great because now you're really, paying, you're really paying down your mortgage. Now, the next one is, is to refi your mortgage. Now, now is not the best time to do this one because interest rates are so high. You know, most likely you already got a better interest rate than what they're going to offer you. And the thing about when you refi, and I, and I don't like this about when you refi. And when you refi your mortgage, you're going to come out of your pocket anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 in fees. So, you know, so you got to ask yourself, if you got your mortgage down to eighty thousand, right, and you, you refi, they're gonna tack on another five thousand dollars. So now you back up to eighty five thousand dollars, right? Unless you know you're gonna be there for a while, then yeah, maybe. Uh, or if, unless you 
you go out and buy a house now, right? When the interest rates are high. And then, you know, you got a high interest rate. Well, the only way to go then, once the Fed start uh, lowering interest rates, then you can refi if you think that you're going to be in the property. Okay. The next one is just going to save you some money. Everybody should do this. It's just, it's just one page. All you do is reassess your property taxes. You know, I think it's like every other year that you can reassess your taxes. And this is something everybody should do if they got a house. You know, even if they tell you they can't reassess it, I would try anyway, because you never know. Some years they tell me they can't do it, then other years they do it. So, you know, uh, that would be a great one. Now, you're probably saying, well, Kate, how would that bring down my uh, balance on my mortgage? Because if they lower your uh, taxes by, let's say, $900, right? And you used to paying nine hundred dollars. Well, you know, and if you can, you keep that nine hundred dollars, and then you just pay it towards the uh, mortgage to get the balance down. Now, I'm gonna tell you something about getting a mortgage company all your money, but we're not gonna get to that yet. So the next one is is property insurance. Now, this one you should. Always shop around for uh, lower property insurance. I know some people say, well, I've been with State Farm and all state and all these people for 20 years. Them people don't, they don't know you from Adam. You know, you think you're doing something by paying higher uh, insurance when what you should be doing is shopping it around, go to three different insurance companies and, and, and tell them what you have and then go with the lowest price. And that's going to save you some money. When you call yourself staying with the same people, they just send you a bill out, oh, okay, it went up uh, $2,000, I'll just pay it. Well, you could have probably went to Joe Blow and got it $2,000 less, right? Now that $2,000 less, could have went towards what? It could have went towards your mortgage, right? Isn't that what we're talking about? It's paying down the mortgage. So any extra change you have, any savings you have, you can apply that towards your mortgage. Okay? The next one is, and I use, I'm guilty of this too. I used to use my uh, uh, mortgage as a piggy bank. This one is borrowing money off the property. And what, what do we do? We borrow money for BS. Well, I can use a deck. Well, I could take a trip. Well, I could do this and I could do that. And one thing about when you borrow money off your property, that clock starts all over again. So let's say if you started out and you done paid it down a little, right? You went to your mortgage probably 10 years. So about 10 years, you done probably knocked a little off of it. But when you refinance that mortgage, that clock starts all over again. You back at 30 years again. And I used to do that. I said, man, wait a minute. I've been in this house 10 years. How did I get back to 30 years again? Because you refinance your mortgage. Never refinance your mortgage. You know, go get a second job or, or save or do whatever else you got to do to take that vacation. But do not borrow off your mortgage. What you're trying to do is get that mortgage paid down before you retire, which some people won't be able to retire because they got big mortgages. So you don't want to be one of those people. And I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that's just the way it is. The next one is, is how many years you want to pay off your mortgage, right? Now, most people, they go 30 years, which is okay if you're in your, what, uh, 20s and 30s. 
Because if you do it 30 years and you 30, then you'll be 60, right? Or if you do it at 35, you'll be 65. So you're good, right? But I see people in their uh, 50s and 60s getting a 30-year mortgage, right? Now, if I'm 60, that means I'm going to be 90 if I make it when I pay off the mortgage, right? Now, what's wrong with that picture? Number one, if you are 60 and 70, right, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it benefit you to just rent you something at that stage of the game? Because all you're doing, all you're doing is just, uh, you'll never pay it off unless you come into some money and you just say, I'm going to pay it off. But 90 years, you know, come on. Yeah, the bank can give it to you. But, you know, technically all you are is a glorified renter because you'll never pay that mortgage off, you know, if you go that late. Like I say, the best time to get a mortgage for most people, and they say young people can't afford it nowadays, is probably in your uh, 30s and 40s, okay? 20s if you could do it. But, you know, once you start hitting 60 and 70, you probably do better just renting something at that stage of the game, you know, because most likely you're not going to pay it off. You know, you might be, if it's in a really good area, you'll probably be able to sell it and make money because it appreciated, you know, but that's for another video. So, you know, um, you don't want to take out 30 years and you 60. You know, you may want to do like, a, if you can afford like a 20-year, 15-year mortgage so you can try to accelerate paying it off, okay? Now, we've been talking about paying off that mortgage, right? You know, get a mortgage company, extra money, where, however I can get it, give it to the mortgage company, right? And this way I can pay off that mortgage, right? But okay, so let's do this. Is it smart to do that? Is it smart to give all the money to the mortgage company? Because you're going to look on your, your statement and you're going to see, wow, I went from 100000 now I'm at 70000 or whatever, right? You've been paying a lot of extra towards that mortgage, right? But here's the problem. What happens if you lose your job, right? It happens. I've lost jobs, and I'm sure you lost jobs too. And you've been diligently paying that mortgage company all that extra principal, right? You've been, you've been on it, paying all that extra principal, right? Right? What happens when you fall on hard times and you don't have any savings because you've been pumping it all in the mortgage company watching your statement balance go down, right? But you lose your job, you get laid off, you get in an accident or whatever, you know, life happens, right? So what happens with that mortgage? Well, the mortgage company, they're going to give you three months if you fall behind to catch yourself up. So then you probably say, well, if I'm laid off or I'm out of work, well, maybe I can, you know, try to refinance the mortgage or borrow off the mortgage or do one of these things. Good luck with that. Because what they're looking at at that point is you don't have a job. So, you know, now we finna, we finna cut you off. So now you in a you're in a situation where you you're stuck. You know, you done put all that equity, right? Well, you went from a hundred to seventy thousand dollars. So now you got whatever it's appraising at and the money you pumped in it. But the bank won't give you anything. So now you screwed, right? So what do you do? Okay, 
Now, a couple of things you could do. If you got, let's say, $100, and you're paying that towards the principal, right? You're paying that towards the principal every month with your mortgage, right? Which is cool. But there's a better way to do this. What I would do, especially if my money ain't the greatest, I would not give it all to the mortgage company because you're not getting none of that money back. What you do is, like now, uh, you can put your money in a high yield savings account. Now, I'm not a big fan of savings, especially in the past, because you weren't making any money off your, your, your savings. You was getting pennies on the dollar. So therefore, you're actually losing money. You ever hear that where they say, when you put your money under the mattress, you're losing money? I never understood that. I said, how do you lose money? If you put your money under the mattress, it's still $100 under the mattress, right? Well, here's the thing with that. With inflation, with the cost of everything going up, your money becomes less valuable because it's not doing anything. So let's say if you get, if, if interest, if the inflation rate Inflation is at 3%, right? If you get a high-yield account that's paying 4%, right? Okay, so now you, you, you're ahead of inflation, so you're doing good, right? You're not doing great, but you your money is keeping up with inflation opposed to just putting it under your mattress. So this is one way you could do it, Right? So you can do it this way, and then you know you stay, you you keep it even, pretty much. Or the other way you could do it is study just giving it all to the mortgage company. You can invest the money. See, now you're making money while you sleep. So if you invest. $100 in a mutual fund or, uh, or stocks or ETL, electronic traded funds. Well, any of these or all of these can work for you because now the market is kind of down right now, but the market ain't going to stay down. And you're going to make more money in these vehicles than you would the average savings account. And the reason I recommend this is, in case you fall on hard times, you can tap this, right? You can tap into these vehicles to bail yourself out. Because the mortgage company is going to say no dice. And if you don't do it, get yourself caught up in three months, they're going to pull your house. Now, what if you got a lot of equity in it? What if you got it almost paid down? Well, the bank ain't in the real estate business. They just want whatever you owe them. So if you owe them $70,000, that's all they want. And then Joe Blow come along, and your house is worth now $200,000, $300,000. Well, look at all the equity you got because you got it down to $70,000. So uh, he's going to have like $230,000 worth of equity. So this would be the vehicle to put the money in. Now you can put maybe a little money with the mortgage, with the principal that you're already paying, but I would put it in a vehicle that I would have access to in case of an emergency. I can, I don't have to go get uh, begging to the mortgage company and they gotta come out do appraisals and all this other stuff and throw in all these fees, uh, reset your uh, clock on your mortgage, no. Uh, this, to me, would be the best way to do it. You can pull your money out. You're all good. So...
After saying all that, I just want to put a disclaimer in there. If you're still with me, I am not a, a financial guru. I'm not some uh, mortgage broker. I'm just a guy that on properties through the years, and I'm just sharing with you some of the things that I did with my mortgage. So that's all I have for you. Again, this is Kate back at it with a new video. Press like if you like my video, and don't forget to subscribe, folks, and I'll see you in my next one.